Hi everyone, welcome to the next 5 minutes or less video. This is going to be on the basics of reading the periodic table of elements. Here we go. The word periodic means repeating pattern. And that just means there's a bunch of different patterns on the periodic table that repeat over and over again, and that's how the elements are categorized. So the first thing to know is that the row are called periods. They go this way. One, two, three, four. So rows go this way, right? There's seven total periods on the periodic table. Each period represents how many energy levels that the element has. Those are the rings or the orbitals. So if this is the nucleus, here's our first energy level, second energy level, third, and those are where the electrons go. Remember from the Bohr model video, 2818. So row one or period one has one shell, two has two shells, three have three shells, and so on and so forth. Now the groups are the columns, they go up and down. The elements in each group have similar characteristics to one another. We call them families because if you think of a family, families, people look similar in the family but they're definitely different from one another. So here are the groups, group one, group two, group three, and they're going up and down and we got 18 at the last one. Now the similar characteristics are not the only thing that matters in the groups. The group number tells us how many valence electrons that the uh, uh, atom has. So valence electrons are how many, this is the nucleus, how many electrons are in the outermost shell. So if I draw a Bohr model real quick, there's two in the first shell and one in the second shell. So this one has one valence electron. So this atom right here would have to go into group one. Group 2 has two valence electrons, and so on and so forth. When you get to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, you're only going to be responsible for 1, 2, and then 13 through 18. You're going to take the second digit in the two digits, and that's going to tell you how many valence electrons these have. So group 13 has 3, group 14 has 4, group 15 has 5, group 16 has 6, group 17 has 7, and group 18 has 8 valence electrons. Now, since they are in the same column and they have the same valence electron number, they're going to react similarly. So that's part of the reason why they're in the same family. All atoms want to have eight valence electrons in order to get stable. So group one, for example, since they only have one valence electron, they're very unstable, so they react a lot. And then group 18 has eight valence electrons, so they're the least reactive and the most stable. So if you want to get to eight total, group one would want to react with group 17 because group 1 has one valence electron and group 17 has 7. So if you have 1 plus 7 that's going to give them 8. So group 1 reacts really well with 17 which means group 2 is going to react really well with group 16. Now when you're reading the periodic table groups 3 through 12 are called transition metals. They're a pretty big group of atoms. So I'm just pointing that out. These are called transition metals. And particularly, mercury in those transition metals, which is Hg, is the only metal that's going to be liquid at room temperature, which is pretty cool. I just want to point out group 17 is also called the halogens, and they're the group that reacts really well with group 1. And last but not least, we have our noble gases. They are the ones in group 18, and they have a full outer shell, which means they rarely react. There's a bunch of cool ones. All right, so that's the periodic table in five minutes or less. I will see you on the next one. Bye.